Alright, what's going on, y'all? This is, uh, yep, boy, yep, boy. And, um, as you can see by what's moving on the screen, that's, uh, actually water. It's in, uh, 3DS Max. Let me stop it for a second. And, oh my god, the water! Should be son, but um, oh, let me add a son into here. A sun system, son. Do a quick render. Oh shit! But uh. Yeah, I want to talk to y'all about a few things. Um, I was just thinking about this and everything. And show y'all a few little things that I've modeled, like, in the past. Um, <clears throat> such as this pen. And let's talk to y'all a little bit about topology. Alright. Now, topology... It's kind of like the, um, well, not kind of like, it is the layout of your geometry on your mesh. Um, you always want to have good topology. For instance, when I'm looking at this and I go into it, all the lines are clean. All right. You can't sell a 3D model that has bad topology. If all these lines were like intersecting and all this other bullshit over here, then it would be not clean topology it wouldn't be good at all and you always want to make sure that you have some type of uh you know good topology to your mesh always always son always you know what i'm saying it makes uh it makes your uh, work look good first of all and um it also helps uh on rendering times and things of that nature and uh professionals you know people in the industry are always making sure that you have good topology because uh sites like turbo squid where you can go and actually sell your 3d models um look for that you have to have clean topology um let me see if i can bring up something else here sign uh on here i'm looking for I actually just started doing, well, probably like a few weeks back, actually, I tried to make um, my first biped uh, creature, which was a human, of course, um, yeah, person. Uh, for my first try, uh, you know, I, I did okay. It's nothing special at all, and I'm not even done with them, but uh, the proportions are still kind of jacked up and everything. And I didn't even put the face on there. It's something that uh, I just really started doing. Um, as far as like modeling objects, like lamps, uh, pens, as you can see, uh, some sh types of automobiles, books, cases, um, you know, pretty much majority of any type of object. Uh, I can I can model with confidence and do it pretty pretty well. But when it comes to living things, you know, that's what I'm kind of venturing off into now and, you know, really trying to understand. I got to take some anatomy classes and things like that to understand, like, the human body and shit. But, you know, for my first try out of making it, you know, it, it turned out pretty well. I still have to come back and kind of refine it, but I'll probably leave this one alone and, uh, and just start all the way over from blank, from square one. But, um... What I'm saying about the topology stands here as well. If you look at the mesh, everything is clean. Everything about it is clean. You know, there's not one, uh, like, spot in the topology where you're like, well, okay, um, that looks kind of messy. Because everything, and all these views, you know, this is what you want to maintain. You want to maintain some type of good flow of topology. Another thing that I'm starting to do with a lot of people 
that also have my classes don't do is that they don't they don't um model off of one piece of geometry and that's one thing that I'm doing at a very early stage right now like I've made this model off of uh off of just a regular uh rectangle and uh one thing about doing it like this building off of one piece of geometry is that uh you, you can use a uh, it's modifier called a symmetry modifier and basically it gives you the advantages of of having everything that you have empty on the inside now it's it's kind of important to have um to have things empty on on the inside because the reason is that I mean if you think about it if you have uh any type of object whether it's a car a person or whatever you know if you know you think about going into a car or standing on the outside looking in a car you can see the inside so you know it's it's important to have to be able to um to model like this so that you know like I said before it does leave uh, alleviate a lot of stress in the computer saves on render time and plus it gives you a more higher level of detail if you want to model the inside of your object also like um another reason why I'm saying this is because and, and there's proof of this in the industry as well and why it's important to do it to model like this with your insides empty of your objects or whatever it is is like have you ever played a video game and when you're playing there'll be like sometimes you get to a point where the camera gets entirely too close to the character and you can see the inside of the character and it's like empty or sometimes like if you're up against a wall or something and you move the camera way too close sometimes you can just see the eyes of the character and shit and it's like okay what the hell you know that that's that's the whole that's the whole um idea behind it as well you see it the the entire mesh is empty you know so uh you know that's what it is um you probably remember this from my intro vid from a while back when I just had the water going well the, the well the horrible water at the time but now I know how to do it pretty damn efficiently now and I can do a lot better using this uh this plug in but you know this was the old school shit but yeah that's all I really wanted to talk about I mean it's uh I don't mean to bore y'all with this video, you know, but I thought it'd be a little bit informative so people can, like, see kind of like a little behind-the-scenes type of thing, you know, saying what's going on with some of my intro vids and what I'm actually doing, you know, in school and stuff. But um, all this stuff is without textures and all that. There's a whole bunch of other things that go into it. But, you know, that's, that's pretty much it, y'all. But I'll holler at y'all later. Peace out.